Alright, welcome to my second video tutorial on how to use some of the features in Windows 7. I hope you like the first one, which is the master control panel, and as you can see, it's still on my screen. In this video, I'm going to be talking about internet browsers. And I'll be showing you how to actually disable Internet Explorer and enable it should you not want to use it or use it should you want to use another uh, web browser. Alright, now the first thing I want to uh, clear up is some myths, or at least I'm calling them myths because some of the stuff is completely illogical that people talk about. Now normally when you read a review about these three Internet browsers, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome, Usually the reviewer will tell you, yeah, I'm comparing these to one another. And if you actually read the review, the review winds up being a biased review that's set out to just basically bash the ones that they don't like. For example, people that love and are in love with Google Chrome will find things to bash about Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer and they'll say anything about it just to, just to trash talk it. Same thing with Mozilla Firefox. People that are in love with Mozilla Firefox will find something bad about Google Chrome and Internet Explorer. And same thing with Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer, people that are in love with it will find something to bash about Google Chrome and Firefox. And all three are saying how they're right and the others are wrong and it just goes in this big circle. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go by um, logic here, okay? Now, it seems to me that if you're running Windows whether it's XP, Vista, Windows 7, if you're running any of those windows in a virus or piece of malware or adware or whatever is written for Windows, what does your internet browser have to do with that? It's contracting it because it's Windows. It's written for Windows. In my opinion, if your computer is going to get a virus, malware, or adware, it's the site you're going to because if the adware, malware, or Ad, uh, whatever uh, whatever you're getting is written for Windows, which pretty much everything is written for Windows. Why would it matter if I use Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, or Internet Explorer to reach a specific point on the internet? Because if let's say um, I'll use iTunes for example, if I go to iTunes through Internet Explorer. And then I go to iTunes through Mozilla Firefox, and then I go to iTunes through Google Chrome. Where did we all? Where, which? Where did I wind up in the end? I wound up at iTunes. It didn't matter which way I used to get there. I'm still at iTunes. So, if the computer's going to get a virus, you can't say the virus is written for Internet Explorer. I mean, you can, but that's like saying the virus is only written for Internet Explorer if it's on. Windows 32-bit XP. That's retarded. If the virus is written on Windows, it doesn't matter what internet browser you're using, your computer is going to contract that. So I have come to the conclusion, and this is just my opinion, that your internet browser doesn't contract anything on your computer. It's where you go on the internet and what you're doing that contracts the viruses. Now, here's a prime example of what I'm talking about. I have used Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome. Now, every place I've read that people are bashing stuff, I've seen people write horrid things about Internet Explorer that I and problems that I've never, ever encountered. Ever. Same thing with Mozilla Firefox and Google Chrome. I've been using those and never once ever encountered any of the bad stuff that people said about them. Again, it's just my opinion that their biased reviews set up to use their favorite to bash the other. And if you actually look, let's take pure facts here. If you actually look at almost every single one of these reviews, all the reviews that people are leaving have actually no data on them whatsoever to back up any of them. It's just opinionated statements used to bash the other one. And if there is data on there, it's never usually backed up. So that's another key factor to look out for. Now, um, this is why I say it's not really your internet browser because I know people with Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Internet Explorer that have gone to places and all got problems with them. It's because of the place they went. Now, I have I've been using, like I said, I've used all three, and I have never once ever encountered a problem. Now, the reason I I think the problems are coming out is because 
I don't go on MySpace. I stay off of Facebook. I don't use any toolbar such as the Google toolbar, the Ask toolbar, nothing. I don't go into um, MySpace, Facebook. I don't go on Yahoo, MSN, AOL, AIM. I do not use any instant messenger service, nothing. I have... I don't go on any of that stuff. I don't go any of those places. I don't have any of that stuff installed, and my computer never has a problem, ever. Every person I've known that has a problem is all connected to one of these places at some point in time. They either use emoticons, they use toolbars, they uh, wind up installing five different toolbars. What the hell's the point to that? Use Google as a homepage. That is your search engine. Why do you need an Ask toolbar, a Yahoo toolbar, a Google toolbar, a Comcast toolbar, and you see these people like nine toolbars in their, in, in their internet browser. For what purpose? You only need Google as your homepage, period. So I, I think, honestly, in my opinion, it's not the browser. It's where you're going the internet. Because if it was the browser, why aren't I getting problems with it that other people are, but yet I'm not going to the same place as these people are? And I've used Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, as well as Google Chrome. So anyway, that being said, I don't know, just stuff to watch out for. And when you read a bias, when you read a re- when you read a review, make sure there's data, and the data is backed up by official sources, not oh I talked to this company and they said this or third party crap. Make sure it's data that can be backed up and verified by an actual source. So anyway, that's just stuff to watch out for. Now that being said, I'm going to show you how to disable Internet Explorer and what the purpose to that would be. Um, since some people are still, quote, paranoid, no matter what it is you say, they're going to say Internet Explorer is a security risk or whatever. Let them believe that that's their own opinion. Um, that would be the reason for disabling it because they don't want to use Internet Explorer because it supposedly has a security risk factor. And even if it's not on, it can still attract stuff is what they're saying. But anyway, that would be the reason to shut it off so it's not active and it's not being made aware because you can't actually delete Internet Explorer from your from Windows 7. So you have to disable it. So, and you want to use one Internet Explorer, so let's say uh, you want to use one Internet Browser. So, how you would disable um, Internet, Ex- Internet Explorer 8 on Windows 7 is you um, go to the Master Control Panel here. As I said, this is very handy. And you go to, um, under Programs and Features, yes, I've collapsed all these windows to make it easier. Under Programs and Features, you want to go to Turn Windows Features On or Off. And this is going to bring up a window here. And once this comes up, you'll see that Internet Explorer 8 is here. All you have to do is uncheck that. And it'll say turning off Internet Explorer might affect other Windows features. It's just basically saying that you're about to shut it off. And if you shut it off, the stuff that uses it is not going to work. Which, if you shut it off, you're not going to be using those programs. But anyway, you click Yes. And once you click OK, it's going to basically go through its process. And once it goes through its process, it's actually going to ask you to reboot your computer. So just give this a second, and you'll see. There it goes. And it's going to ask me to reboot my computer in one second. Now, I'm going to click restart now, which means I'm going to end the video. But that's the, uh, that's the reason for shutting it off, because people are paranoid. If you want to use it, you can just... If you want to use it, all you have to do is... You can do restart later, and all you'd have to do is do it again. Double click it open and check it back off, and then click OK. And like I said, that's the reason for disabling it. That's why people disable it, and those are the myths and stuff to look out for. And um, solid logical facts rather than opinions and biased reviews. All right, in the uh, next video I'm going to show you... um, I'm going to take care of this task bar um, because the quick launch bar has been removed... Um, well, it's been disabled in Windows 7, so I'm going to show you how to get that back so you don't have to deal with this taskbar or this thick bar. That's going to be in the next video. All right, enjoy, and have a good night. See you in the next video.